Another highly requested video was Winstrol, AKA stands and all. You might know of it as Winnie. So is it worth it or not? Well, it depends on what phase you're in and what you're trying to accomplish. It could be a great addition for getting ready for stage. And there's a few different mechanisms of action that lead me to saying this. However, uniquely enough and contradicting to popular belief, it's also great for even functionality, such as the 1988 Olympics, Ben Johnson destroyed his entire competition, including the golden boy, who is the reigning champion. He then got busted for being on Winstrol. Most people say that Winstrol isn't good for athletic performance. However, the anabolic to androgenic ratio is extremely high and we actually do see this in relative practice and use, which is not always the case. Note for women, because this is definitely being more popularized within this world, mainly due to the fact of wellness, it is extremely potent virilization, AKA masculinization and dosing would be no higher than 10 milligrams. Five milligrams is probably plenty. Virilization rates are extremely high for Winstrol. Therefore, the duration of use should be no more than three week period of time. And a note for men, I've seen this run for up to eight weeks. I don't really think that this is the best use. However, four weeks seems to be plenty in relativity. Dosing ranges usually in the bodybuilding world from 25 to 50 milligrams, which tends to be enough for most people, all the way up to 100 milligrams, which is absolutely brutal. And let's talk why. Winstrol does increase collagen synthesis. However, it does not improve the filaments that hold it together. Therefore, we see a reduction in how well your tendons feel. So the drying out factor of the joints and tendons is a real thing. From relative experience, anything above 50 milligrams is pretty brutal on joints. And I say this because you don't want it to reduce down your performance, especially when your energy is reducing down leading into a show. Due to the fact it is a DHT derived hormone, it does not convert into estrogen, which can be good or bad depending on what you're doing. In a fat loss phase, you don't really want much aromatization. Now here's the kicker. It does reduce down your natural production of testosterone. Women or men, it is still an exogenous hormone, so we do see a reduction there. Men definitely need to have some form of testosterone in the mix so that they're making sure that they are not in a low testosterone environment. Winstrol has been known to quote unquote thin the skin, or we hear this terminology, <laughs> dick skin. This in fact does happen because it does change collagen ratios within the skin and the sub Q space. It does give that thinning of the skin effect, which is another reason why it could be utilized as a competition prep drug. The number one utilization for this within competition prep would be the reduction of sex hormone binding globulin allows for more free androgens within the body. So oral versus injection is another thing to be talked about here. Oral has been shown in studies to reduce down your sex hormone binding globulin a little bit more than injection form. However, injection form will be more bioavailable within the body due to the fact it bypasses the liver on the first pass. Now, injectable Winnie is no joke. It is so painful, it will feel like you have sandpaper in your muscle. From what I understand back in the day, it didn't feel quite like this. However, I can talk from personal use. I will never ever do injection ever again, especially when you're dieting down and everything is already aching and in pain, just not a good thing to add into the mix. However, if you do decide to go this route, you can dilute it a little bit further with something like an injectable L-carnitine. Another very important thing to note is the hepatoxicity or the liver toxicity of Winshaw. It is much more liver toxic than something like an Anabar or an Oxandrolone. However, it's not as liver toxic as something like a Dianabol. Just like almost all other forms of a 17 alkylated or methylated, which it is alkylated, it does have profound effects on your cholesterol profile. So your HDL reduction, as well as your LDL increasing. That means your good cholesterol goes down and your bad cholesterol goes up. In the clinical setting, it can be prescribed for hereditary angioedemia, which is essentially edemia and can cause swelling within something like your face, hand, hands, feet, and more. It is not very commonly prescribed. However, there is one very unique and beneficial use that is not really used in the clinical setting. And I've actually talked about this in a hypothesis a very long time ago, and you can see it on this video, and it is a very particular virus, C19, since I can't say the full word. It is well known that it reduces down bradykinin production. Now, 
the virus that we all know is responsible for causing bradykinin storms, which causes major complications from that virus in particular. So this could be a great practical use of this drug. And I can talk from personal experience that it definitely helped me when I had it. 